Hey everybody, Dave Consiglio with Powerless Yet Unstoppable Podcast. Just uh, wanted to take some time today and uh, talk to you about courage and character. Kind of tie it into uh, fasting and prayer as well. And uh, just kind of give you a firsthand example of uh, an experience I had with fasting uh, last year at about this time. So before we go any further, let's uh, give it back to the good Lord and let him lead the conversation. Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you for this day. We thank you for this time. Thank you for the ability to wake up this morning, get out of bed, and uh, come here today and talk about you. We just uh, ask that you lead the conversation, Lord. Prepare our hearts and minds to receive it. We pray a blessing upon those that may be listening, Lord. Allow them to uh, take something from it that they can take forward with with them throughout the week, Lord, and uh, be a light for those around them. We thank you, praise you again for a wonderful Christmas, Lord. I, I thank you, praise you again for baby Jesus and the sacrifice and uh, the salvation that he brought and uh, help us not forget the true uh, meaning and reason for the season. Pray a blessing upon the upcoming uh, new year. And uh, once again, Lord, just lead this conversation. Allow us to spend some time with you and learn something about you and your word. We love you. We praise you. We pray these things in Jesus' precious, powerful name I pray. Amen. All right. So to start today, uh, again, just want to give you a heads up a little bit. Uh, the rest of the group uh, not joining us today, kind of out with family this uh, holiday week. And uh, we had someone uh, planned to be on, but uh, things kind of fell through. No big deal. Just still wanted to come here and uh, talk today. Uh, so kind of spur of the moment, but it was crazy. I had a couple uh, devotions in my backpack left over from my time doing Bible study with the football team and it hit uh, Missouri State. So uh, we're going to dive into the one we did on Courage and uh, kind of tap into character, and uh, also the fast and prayer time, as we kind of talked about last week with Sarah. Um, so first off, the first Bible verse we have, Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, So be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Um I love that scripture just, uh, again, right at the start, it says, be strong and be courageous. And I think uh, sometimes, you know, we talked about obstacles in our lives before too, and sometimes we focus so much on what's right in front of us, but we forget that uh, that God's got a bigger plan. He's got a better plan. He's always there for us. Um, and, and again, when we truly surrender that to Him, um, you know, there are no limitations as to what God can do. And, uh, you know, what mountain God can move, what situation he can heal, what relationship he can restore. Um, And and I think that's just a powerful reminder. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Don't panic. Um, Again, God's got a bigger plan. He sees the bigger picture and uh, he knows what we need before we even say a word. And I think one of the crazy things, too, is if you really think about that, um, a lot of times, you know, I feel like, I know which way I'm supposed to go. I know what I'm supposed to do. Um, I think it's this way. And maybe a bump in the road comes along, a situation that causes me to kind of panic or get in an upheaval. um, And I lose sight that, again, I might think it's best for me, but ultimately God knows what's behind that door. And maybe that door is not the right one for me to be entertaining right now. Uh, Maybe I'm not mature enough for it, whatever it might be. But Sometimes, again, we we try to fixate our eyes on the obstacles that are in front of us instead of truly letting it go and giving God control, which is also part of courage, right? I think uh, a lot of times you hear courage and you think like stand up for yourself and, you know, big, bold and strong. I mean, that's that's part of it. But I think courage also is is having the ability to listen to the Holy Spirit when it when the Holy Spirit's telling you to do something, you do it. And and whether it's like, I don't know, I might stand out here. It might be awkward. People might look at me differently. Um, I might be the outcast here, the black sheep, so to speak, because I'm sticking up for what I know is right. Um, I mean, that's courage and that's being courageous. Um, and ultimately, I think in times like that, that's when your character is truly revealed, right? It's easy. We talk about masks these days, unfortunately, with the virus and all the stuff going on. It's easy to put a mask on and pretend to be someone that you're not in front of people. You might be able to do it for a short time, uh, kind of pull one over on people. But ultimately, your courage, your character is who you are when no one's watching, right? Um, It all matters because at the end of the day, nobody physically may be watching you, 
But at the end of the day, the good Lord knows exactly what's going on, exactly what you're thinking. Um, you know, so again, to, to tie back into courage, um, I think there's a big part to be said with courage in, in, in listening to the Holy Spirit. It might not always be comfortable, uh, might not be easy. And I think a lot of times it won't be easy because, again, the Bible says, too, we're not of this world, right? So if we're not of this world, we should stand out. Um, we should be different. Uh, look different, act different, talk different, walk different, um, speak different, right? So we got to take courage in that. And uh, as Deuteronomy 31, 6 says again, so be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Um, and the tail end of that verse, again, is a great reminder. He'll never fail you and never abandon us. Um, and again, sometimes we get in certain situations where we, we fixate our eyes on the issues in front of us and we lose sight that God's right there. Um, and, and sometimes it's one of those things where when things are going good in our life, good, quote unquote, good, we tend to try to do it on our own. Right. And we, we think, well, I can skip my morning prayers this morning. I can skip bedtime prayers. Feeling pretty good. Today was good. And excuse me, and then we lose sight. Hey, why is it good, right? And giving praise, giving glory right back to God. Um, again, just one of those things, making sure we're always reminded, no matter good or bad, you know, God has called us. He's given us a, uh, an attitude, a heart of courage, strength, confidence, um, and, and a strong character that we can lean on in times when things kind of implode upon us. Um, and the second part of that too is, those are opportunities to build your character and strengthen your courage as well as your faith, right? So again, it's it's easy to have courage, easy to be strong, easy for your character to be exemplary, right? Uh, the best ever if you have nothing wrong in your life, right? If everything's going perfect, um, character should be great. You're acting, you're living right. Um, you're courageous in mind. But again, in those times when we got our backs up against the wall, maybe going some going through some things at work or at home with a, with a child, um, co-workers, friends, whatever it might be, um, even here in the holidays. I mean, let's be honest, you know, we just had Christmas here and um, there may be a handful of you out there who get together with relatives and you might not like so-and-so or they talk about this, you have different views and it's it's one of those situations that it can be toxic if we let it, or we can be courageous and stay true to our character and understand, again, we can all have differences. Uh, we might not always like each other, uh, but we're called to love each other. We're called to be courageous. Uh, you know, again, uh, build that character in those moments when, again, it might be a little less than op uh, a little less than um uh, opportunistic or a little less than desirable. There was the word, a little less than desirable. But uh, again, having the courage, having the strength and having the confidence to stay true to your character in situations where it might not necessarily be the easiest. Um, also wanted to kind of tie this into to prayer and fasting. We talked again a little bit last week with Sarah about it um, and how her and her family goes through you know, major decisions that they have to make in prayer and fast time. Uh, personal experience I kind of wanted to give to you guys, um, and it ties into courage and character. Um, and let me say this before I go any further. This was not me. This was definitely by prayer, faith, and the Holy Spirit that's helped me um, get over one of my addictions. Um, so one of mine was caffeine. Um, as a strength coach, you know, we're up early, we stay late. Um, it's a long grinding days. Um, you know, right now in between the holidays, we have some time here to kind of recharge, re-energize and get ready. But, uh, a year ago, January 4th, um, our church starts out with a 21 day prayer and fast to start the year off. Um, basically pick something, um, you do without it for those three weeks. Um, and really the, the point is when you crave it, pray about it. When you crave it, prayer, crave it, prayer. So like you don't want to do something that would be easy, like for me, give up soda. Um, I don't drink a whole lot of soda, very rarely, so that wouldn't be hard. But for me, it was caffeine, and I just felt like this was the second time I've done it. Um, 
you know, and it's easy again over the break when I'm not up early, it's easier. So long story short, I, I, I did caffeine um, first couple days. And let me rewind and let you know, uh, in my profession, I would probably drink the equivalent to about 10 cups of coffee. I'd have a uh, little go-go juice in the morning out of bed, pre-workout, uh, a couple more go-go's throughout the day. Um, just not healthy at all. And uh, I could really tell it was wearing on myself, just the, the, the ups with the caffeine and then crashing behind it. Um, so I really felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me to lean on God, lean on prayer, and just give up caffeine. So for the 21-day fast and pray, uh, prayer and fast, I uh, chose to do caffeine. Uh, first couple days, massive headaches, just, you know, withdrawals from coming down from that stuff. Um you know, relied on prayer. Every time I craved caffeine, it was a reminder to me to just say a prayer, right? I didn't need to have to get down into a 30 minute prayer or just even a simple, dear Lord, give me the strength or thank you for giving me the strength to, you know, not crave caffeine or not go that route, but rely on you. So the first three weeks go by, uh, like I said, first couple of days, massive headaches, those started to kind of wear off all the way through, had headaches, um, made it to three weeks. And then that weekend, our pastor, he had warned us. He said, Hey, you know, we're coming off the prayer and fast here, but I want you to be careful how fast you go back to what you were doing because it'll suck you right back into where you were. And he said, you know, whether, whatever you're giving up, maybe not go full fledged back into it, but just a little bit. And then make sure again, to keep in mind how much it consumes your time. So it might've been social media, it could have been a specific food group, caffeine for me. It might have been, um, you know, doing away with other distractions, TV. But again, his whole point was don't jump off the deep end and go right back to where you were. So that got me thinking a little bit. I was like, OK, so I made it three weeks. The first two weeks, we didn't have any workouts, any offseason stuff. So that was easier. The, sec the third week, which was the most challenging, I believe, uh, was when we were back into full fledged workouts. Um, I was I was up uh, I was up in the morning, probably four o'clock. Set up, get to the weight room, first workout group at six, um, and I'm like, I don't know. I, I think I can do this a week. You know, pray about it, finish strong. Did it that whole week, and uh, that weekend came, and the pastor reminded me that, and then I just kind of felt this nudge to challenge myself, saying, Hey, how about we do it one more day? And I said, if we can do it one more day, let's stack another day, stack another day, stack another day, and let's see what happened. Um, so again, long story short, gave up caffeine for those first three weeks, made it another day, another week. And uh, meanwhile, my wife was asking me, hey, so how long are you going to be done with caffeine? And uh, it really hit me that I felt like the good Lord was calling me to give it up for good. And uh, I can say that because again, by the by the grace of God, by the strength of God, the, the courage that he blessed me with to stay strong, the determination, um, but also I think the, the heaven, heavenly character and the heavenly uh, confidence that was developed through my faith has allowed me to be caffeine free since January 4th, uh, 2020. So coming up on just about a year, um, and I will say this, there were two instances two instances where I, I vividly, I really had to dig deep and just fight the fight the urge to be extremely mad and disappointed in myself. One was out, out at practice. Um, I had a headache that day, so I wanted to take something to get rid of the headache. And uh, I kind of forgot that some headache medicine has caffeine in it. So I asked one of our trainers out of practice to give me something. I took it. And next thing you know, I felt like a little more alert and I was like, oh, come on, really? So I looked at the package. I believe it had 50, uh, 50 milligrams of caffeine. And at that point, I just felt really disappointed in myself. I felt like I had let down the challenge. I felt like I let down God. I felt like, and it still bothers me to this day. Um, but then I was also reminded that like, hey, it's okay right? You give them 110%. You give them everything you got. You pray when you're at your at your very worst, when you're struggling, you need to help. You need to pick me up. Um, and it was kind of my reminder again that this world is broken, 
right? I made every attempt in my power to be caffeine free and give it up forever, but it didn't really, we had that one moment, right? And then I've had other moments too, where uh, I think it was my wife mixed up a, a coffee drink or something, some chocolate mocha, whatever at the house. And I took, put it up to my lips, had it in my mouth. And I reminded, I was like, Hey, that's got some, and I spit it right out. Um, and again, I say that it's just the Holy Spirit subtle nudges, right? The, the, the positive was I was able to catch one instance, spit it out before I drank it. The other one was an honest mistake, innocent mistake, but instead of beating myself up about it, um, and, and holding it against myself and being frustrated, it still bothers me, but, um, I just, I, I learned to give it back to God and understand again, this, as much as we try to be perfect in this world and, and do things, we're going to slip up, right? And, and that's not an egregious slip up. But for me, if you know me, I'm, I, I just, I pride myself on determination and willpower. Uh, but again, it, it was a reminder too. It ain't, it ain't mine. It's his. It's what God blessed me with, uh, you know, willpower to, 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 to when you say you're going to do something, do it, follow through with it and uh, be strong and courageous throughout the process. So I got to admit, I got to say, since January 4th, 2020, aside from aside from uh, that, that Tylenol that had 50 milligrams of caffeine in it, and uh, the one sip I had on my mouth and spit out, I've been caffeine free this entire year. So um, again, I just, I take pride in it. Uh, but again, it's a constant reminder that you know, without him, I couldn't do it. I can't do it. I'm nothing with uh, I'm nothing without him. Everything with him, and and the bigger point there is, it it really forced me initially in those first three weeks. It was yes, prayer. Let's be about this. Get rid of it. Move on, and then get to the three weeks, and we can go right back. But then I found out that like I was relying on a worldly stimulant to pick me up and have help me get through a day, grind out a great day. When in reality, every time I craved caffeine or I felt a little tired, it was a nudge to just say a prayer. So now I found myself relying and starving, craving more prayer than I did caffeine. And, uh, you know, trust me, there's there's moments now, days now. Um, yeah, I see someone with a beverage, uh, you know, a caffeinated beverage, a uh, uh, monster bang, whatever it might be. And it's like, hey, that'd be intriguing or some pre-workout uh but then I'm reminded, hey, let's not go there. Uh, let's give it back, yeah, give it back to God in prayer. And uh, the other thing I found out too is, you know, I've had some of my best workouts, no pre-workout, no caffeine, and just cranking worship music and praying and let the Holy Spirit work through me and flow through my body. Um, so again, just wanted to kind of tie that into courage and character. Um, you know, again, I, I'm not bragging by my own means at all. Uh, like I said, I, I, I would, there's no way I could do it without him. It's, uh, it's by the grace of God. And, and like I said, it's a constant reminder to me today in those moments when I crave or feel like I need something outside of him. It's just a nice nudge to remind me to get back to my center, which is prayer and, and having faith time and, uh, you know, productive time with God, um, instead of relying on a cheap drink or a cheap beverage, just to find my way, fight my way through the through the day, and uh, that kind of goes back to the front front end of this when we talked about no, we think we know what we need uh, more than God, right? And and I think all of us can agree there's been something in our lives, probably multiple times, where we feel like something should have happened and the complete opposite happened, and we might not have seen it even yet today, but at some point we're going to know exactly why that happened instead of what we thought we needed, right? And it's the same thing for my fast and prayer time with caffeine. I was telling myself that I needed caffeine to make it through the day, when in reality, I was completely lying to myself. The only thing I needed to make it through the day was prayer and time with God. And that's honest truth. Aside from that, uh, I didn't need anything else. You know, he's going to put clothes on my back. He's going to put food in my belly. Uh, he's going to take care of warmth, everything like, um, you know, so again, I'm vividly reminded just how I feel like I needed it one way and the good Lord completely flipped it around and showed me a whole new way of living 
that, that I don't have to wake up, you know, having to rely on caffeinated beverages to make it through the day. Um, it's relying on prayer and faith time with him. Um, second Bible verse I had here, uh, Isaiah 41 10 says, don't be afraid for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Okay. And again, some of you might be like, what does that have to do with courage? Talks about strength. Don't be discouraged. Um, that's exactly it, right? I think it's courage to be uh, joyful, be hopeful, uh, be loving, be kind in certain situations that the world might say otherwise. Um, you know, let's say something happened at work and you get reprimanded for it. It wasn't your fault, but if blaming you, how are you going to respond? Right? Do you have the courage to respond in a heavenly way, in a godly way that people are going to look at you and be like, hey, we all know it wasn't your fault, but for some reason it came down your way, uh, you handled it properly. You know, are we are we displaying, you know, the courage and character that the Holy Spirit's infused in us the day that we accepted Jesus into our life as our Lord and Savior? Um, and don't be discouraged, right? Again, courage and discourage, complete opposites, right? Discourage, you're uh, down and out. I like to say Eeyore, right? Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. Everybody knows Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore and Tigger. Um, that's, that's Eeyore, right? He's always discouraged. Um, I would say Tigger's the complete opposite. He's got confidence. He's got courage. He's got strength. And he's got energy. Um, that's, that's how we're called to live, right? And that's what the Holy Spirit gives us is a confidence, an energy, an enthusiasm, and a juice about who we are and who God created us to be to uh, fulfill our duties, um, His purpose, His plan, His will for our lives, but to glorify Him in everything we do. Um, and then just to think that last part, right? Uh, starts out, don't be afraid, for I am with you. And then it finishes up, I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Um, enough said right there. I mean, if 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 God's going to tell us blatantly, plain out, bluntly and specifically to do not be discouraged and he will lift us up with his right hand. Um, I think we need to take notice of it and trust. Right. And to circle back to courage, to got to have the courage to, to truly trust and understand his plan, not ours. And, and to be courageous is to stand up for him who stood up for you at the cross, stood up for us at the cross, right? So some other ones, uh, so the last one here, just wanted to talk about 2 Chronicles 15, 7 says, but as for you, be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded, okay? And to tie back into what we just said, um, you know, I, if I can be bluntly honest, I think we all need to, as believers, be more courageous, uh, stand up for what we know is right, um, stand in the way of what we know is wrong, but we need to do it in the way that Jesus would do it, not in a combative way, not in a way that uh, we get people to look at us like we're uh, throwing stones or we're casting shadow on other people. That's not at all what Jesus did. We need to be courageous in in his message, his gospel, Stand behind it. Let his word lead the way. Let his word lead the conversation and let our lives be a courageous example of the confidence and courage and character that the Holy Spirit's infused in us. Um, it says at the end of that, for your work will be rewarded. And uh, I just just try to be a hopeful message here today, especially with uh, New Year's resolutions here coming up around the corner. Um, maybe, maybe instead of, uh, making a selfish resolution, which they're not bad, um, you know, whether it's getting healthy or eating properly, sleeping better, more devotion time, that's, that's all more prayer time. Um, maybe in that prayer time, we ask God what new year's resolution he wants us to do for him. Um, instead of looking outwardly in the mirror or financially or, or, you know, materialistically things, Maybe we can just hit our knees and ask God what he wants our New Year's resolution to be. So at the end of the day, we can be more courageous. We can be more confident. We can be more, uh, be more uh, strength. Um, 
and we can just be a light for him. So in everything that we do from January 1st on, and not that it has to wait until then, but uh, is a complete example of him, his word, his message, and things that he wants us to do to help build his kingdom. Um, Because again, at the end of the day, it says your work will be rewarded, right? So like I said, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Um, Hope everybody had a great Christmas with family and uh, remembering the reason for the season. Um, Again, hopefully you guys got something good out of the message here today with uh, courage, uh, confidence, kind of tying into uh, fasting and prayer time. And uh, again, let's all just take some time in the next couple of days and uh, maybe an extra five minutes in prayer, 10 seconds, whatever it is, and just ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to show us a resolution that we can do with Him in front and to help be a, be a light for Him. So when people say, hey, what's your New Year's resolution? It's not just to lose weight, but maybe it's to, hey, I'm going to take care of my temple better because I'm an example of God, right? My body is God's temple. It's the Holy Spirit's temple. I'm going to take care of it. And that way it opens up a dialogue and conversation for a person you might meet that you don't know where their faith is, right? But uh, I think it'd be awesome if we could come up with some New Year's resolutions that are that are faith-based, Holy Spirit-filled, and uh, a way to, to glorify God in, in a New Year's resolution that can last an entire year. Um, because I think if I'm being honest with you, um, if you try to do it on your own, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. But, uh, the minute you humble yourself, as James 4.10 says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Um, so as we make those new year's resolutions this year, let's do exactly that. Come humbly to the Lord, ask him what we want, uh, ask him what we would like, but also ask him what he would like of us. Um, so we can be a light for him in the uh, upcoming year. With that said, let's break it out in a word of prayer. And uh, like I said, Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, Hope you guys are enjoying the podcast and we'll be back up again next week with a full crew and and a special guest. Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to uh, come here again. Just pray a blessing upon those uh, out there listening to the podcast. Lord, I just ask that uh, they hear some encouraging words and uh, something they can take forward with them throughout the day and the week ahead. Um, pray a blessing upon the upcoming new year, Lord. We uh, pray for those that are still fighting uh, the, the virus and the different uh, mutations of it, Lord. We just lay it at your feet. We trust you. We know you're in control and um, allow it to be an opportunity for your gospel and your word to spread and uh, your kingdom to be built. I pray a blessing upon those listening to this, Lord, that they come up with some great heavenly, uh, Holy Spirit filled resolutions for the year ahead and uh, allow them to be courageous and confident in approaching those New Year's resolutions. And when temptation comes, Lord, we fight it with you. We fight it with the confidence and strength and the courage that you've blessed us with through the Holy Spirit. Once again, we're nothing without you. We're everything with you. We love you. We praise you. Keep us humble and hungry in every aspect of our lives, Lord. In Jesus' precious, powerful name we pray. Amen.